The Big G has been around for a long time. In fact, this October he will be celebrating his 70 year anniversary and in that time he has starred in 38 films along with numerous other TV shows, short films and commercials. And over the course of all those he has gone through numerous different designs, ranging from childhood hero to Satan's nightmare. And with the latest Godzilla design causing some controversy amongst audiences, I figured it would be a fitting time to go through and rank all the various Godzilla designs over the years. From the good, the bad, and the OH MY GOODNESS! I consider myself a pretty big Godzilla fan. I've watched all the films, played the video games, collected a bunch of merch, hell I even bought this uh, Godzilla plush the other week. Being an adult has its perks. Nevertheless, I'm anticipating a couple of my choices on this list will go against the typical Godzilla fandom and maybe even cause a little bit of outrage. But hey, what's a YouTube comment section without some civil disagreement, right? So let's get on with the list. You know the drill. S tier is awesome, E tier is terrible. Though I think instead of an S tier, we should name this G tier. Or better yet, the tier that really hits the G spot. As for the bottom tier then, we can name that the Angurus tier. No, that's not fair. I actually really like Angurus. Sure, he's often getting his ass kicked, but he's a loyal friend and he's trying his best. He's kind of like the Krillin of the Godzilla series. So instead I think we'll name this tier Manila's Bitch. Perfect. And of course, if there are multiple designs in the same tier, the left side will be ranked higher than the right side. So here would be like a B plus, and here would be like a B minus. Alright, cool, let's get started. Alright, first on our list is the first Godzilla, known as the Shodai Gojisu. Which, by the way guys, I'm going to try my best to pronounce these names as best I can, but you know how my pronunciation can be at times, so no promises. So when pitching the idea for a monster, they wanted a creature design that sported the head and body of a T-Rex, the arms of an Iguanodon, and the dorsal plates of a Stegosaurus. And so Godzilla was born. The skin texture would be rough and bumpy, apparently as a visual replica to the skin that actual victims would have due to radiation burns. The head would be relatively small, and would have a pronounced brow to give a menacing look to it. It would also feature some small pointed ears, and a set of fangs two things which would disappear as the Showa series went on. On his back he would feature three rows of jagged dorsal plates, with the middle set being the largest, giving Godzilla a very distinctive silhouette on the black and white film. Interestingly though, despite Godzilla being known for his iconic charcoal grey colour, this original suit was originally coloured a dark brown. The body was very stocked, with wide legs and relatively small arms, which though given the monster a very powerful look, would make it incredibly heavy for the suit actor to move around in, and thus did give this suit a lack of mobility. Also it's worth not to confuse this suit with the head puppet that was used in some of the close up shots, which though looking okay from the sides, had a very derpy look from the front angles. Ah! How are you doing Rex? Were you scared? Tell me honestly. Overall though, pretty solid Godzilla design, and though not perfect, it manages to get itself into a very solid A tier. Next up we have the Gaia Kushu Goji. This suit was massively slimmed down from the previous one in order to give it greater mobility. This wasn't so important in the last film as Godzilla was just slowly lumbering through the city, but this time he'd be facing off against another monster, Angerus. And though the new design did make it much easier for the suit actor to move about, the trade off is that Godzilla now looked way too scrawny not helped by the fact that a lot of the fight scenes aren't slowed down, which makes Godzilla lose his illusion of size. Though the arms were now a little bigger and more proportioned to the body, the head also appears to be a little thinner than the previous design, and though still keeping the ears and fangs, it just seems to have a bit more of a goofy look to it. There's also again, the puppet head that's used for close ups, and for Godzilla shooting his atomic breath. This is pretty much the same, though the teeth do tend to protrude much more outwards than the actual suit. I know recently this suit had a bit of a resurgence in popularity thanks to the analogue horror meme, and thus a lot of fans have now begun to warm to it. But sadly not so much for me, so I'm pulling it down in C tier. He's still skinny. 
All right, the King Goji suit. For as silly as the King Kong vs. Godzilla film is, and for how bad the King Kong suit is, seriously, this guy looks like he's on meth. It actually has a really good Godzilla suit. Godzilla is back to having a much more stockier look again, with large arms that have pronounced claws, giving him back his more powerful look, but while still maintaining the mobility for fighting. This suit notably gave Godzilla a much more dinosaur-like appearance, with the longer jaw and the eyes having a yellowish tinge to them. Perhaps this was intentionally done, seeing as how Kong had previously fought a T-Rex in the original King Kong, who knows. But although the head looks good from the side angles, from the front, eh, not so much. This suit would also make a number of changes that would set the staple for the rest of the Showa series. First and most obvious being that Godzilla was now being presented in colour, and so would sport the iconic charcoal grey look. The toes would now be reduced from 4 down to 3. The tail would be made longer and more rounded at the end, and the dorsal plates would become less jagged, with the middle row being now much larger than the two adjacent rows. And unfortunately some other classic traits were lost too, such as the pointed ears and the fangs which I felt was a downgrade. Still though, despite the downgrades, I still really like this Godzilla design, so I'm placing it into A tier. Next up we have the Mosu Goji. Godzilla was once again slimmed down, but not quite to the extent of Godzilla raids again. And in a way to compensate for the slimming down, Godzilla was given a more defined breastbone to give him a more muscular appearance. The head and jaw returned to its more rounded shape, and the eyes were given a very pronounced brow to give Godzilla a mean, angry look. Some argue that it's a little bit too pronounced, but I like it. This poor suit was definitely put through its paces, as not only did the upper jaw get damaged due to the suit actor tripping into a building during production, which they actually kept in the final product, and this incident resulted in giving the upper lip an iconic wobble from whenever it roared. But the head also briefly caught fire at one point, which again, you can still see in the final product. Despite its damages though, I really like this design, and it would be the last time in the Showa series that we'd see Godzilla with a villainous appearance. Solid A tier. The same suit would also be used in the following film, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, though would now be using a different head due to the extensive damage the previous one sustained, and there were some slight alterations made to it, in that Godzilla was given less of a menacing look, and this was because this was the first film where Godzilla would start to turn from villain into more of an anti-hero. And for that, I would say this version drops down into B tier. Daisenso Goji. Overall pretty similar to the previous suit, but there are some differences. Godzilla was really starting to go down the more goofy, kid-friendly route now. These are the films that had the iconic Godzilla moon dance and the victory nose rub. So as a result, the more menacing traits were starting to be dialed back, with his claws being made softer and less pronounced, the head now had more of a rounded face and jaw, and they gave the eyes a less angered look. In fact, this suit is often dubbed as the Cookie Monster suit. Still an overall good design though, but sitting itself at a low B. Alright, now we get our first real stinker of the Godzilla suits, and that's the Musoku Goji from Son of Godzilla. Real talk though, I actually really like the Son of Godzilla film, and no I'm not trolling. Despite its many, many flaws, I genuinely do enjoy it. However, I absolutely despise this Godzilla design. So because Godzilla is to be a father in this film, they tried to give him a more softer, caring-like appearance. They made his eyes bigger and more docile looking, and the mouth was made even shorter and more rounded. But it results in him just looking like some dumb, derpy, drunk frog-like creature with singed lips. A frogzilla, if you will. Though, to be fair, if Minilla was my son, I think I would quickly fall into alcoholism too. This change in appearance would only feel more jarring when you'd watch the film's trailer. As for Godzilla films, they would often use older suits for the water scenes, as water would damage the suit material. So you'd get the shot of the Daisenso Goji suit coming out of the water, and you're thinking, yeah, looks pretty cool, that's our Godzilla. Then it immediately cuts to the next shot and it's like, Apparently this suit was made to look like this so it would resemble Manila a bit more, but Manila looks like an abomination. Could literally be the poster child for Planned Parenthood. 
So why you'd want to base anything around this, I have no idea. Easy D tier. The Soshingeki Goji. Now, when I think of Showa Godzilla, this is the Godzilla image that immediately pops into my mind. Possibly because Destroy All Monsters was the first Japanese Godzilla film I ever saw, but also because this suit was used in four different films. And just for context, that not only makes it the most used suit in the Showa series, but the most used suit in all of the Godzilla series. So yeah, Toho clearly really liked this suit, or they were just too cheap to make a new one. But there's a lot of good to say for it. It's definitely a step up from the previous suit. The eyes were given a bit more of a brow to get rid of that stupid derpy look, and the mouth no longer looked like it had singed lips. And the suit also had a lot of flexibility, which allowed for much more maneuverability for the fight scenes. But again, I think it's almost been slimmed down a little too much. Not quite as bad as Godzilla raids again, but enough to make Godzilla lose a bit of that powerful stocky build. So despite my familiarity with it, and the fact that I know this suit is popular amongst Godzilla fans, I'm gonna have to put this into B tier. Oh, and uh, fun fact, because this suit was used so much, it really began to show its wear and tear as the films went on. In fact, in its final film, Godzilla vs. Gigan, you can actually see pieces of it starting to fall off. Megaro Goji. So this is when Godzilla was fully leaning into the kid-friendly genre, and it really shows with this suit. Everything about it just comes across as so childlike. The dorsal plates were no longer sharp and jagged, but now had a smooth, thick, almost marshmallow-like look to them. The body, similar with the last one, just looks a little bit too slim for my liking. And as for the head, though I think the mouth actually looks okay, as it seems to be less rounded than the previous designs, the eyes are just way too big. It's also worth knowing that because Godzilla was initially not going to be in this film, and was only added in at the last minute, the suit had to be thrown together incredibly quickly. And it does show with the simplistic design and lack of detail. So for that, this is going into detail. However, for later films this suit would actually undergo some slight modifications, namely in the head, where more details were added to the face, the eyes were reduced in size, and the brow was lowered to give Godzilla a more angered look. And honestly, I actually really like this design. So for that, this alteration actually not only makes it up into C tier, but secures itself as a low B tier. Hanna-Barbera Godzilla. Yeah, the Hanna-Barbera Godzilla really doesn't look like Godzilla at all. I don't know whether this was done due to a licensing agreement, or that Hanna-Barbera were not able to get certain rights to the character, but it has none of the iconic Godzilla traits. He's coloured green, his dorsal plates are really small, he doesn't even have the Godzilla roar. In fact, I don't think I'd even class this as a roar at all. And his classic atomic breath? It's just fire. Yeah, barely even Godzilla at all. This is going all the way down into Miller's bitch tier. Alright, end the Showa series and enter the Heisei era, where Godzilla wasn't just back from a nine year hiatus, but he was back on form, abandoning the more child-friendly look of the Showa era to now being back as a powerful, menacing force of nature. A lot of features from the original 1954 Godzilla design were brought back for this one, such as having four toes, the fangs and ears have returned, and his dorsal plates were made larger, with the adjacent rows now being much closer in size to the middle set. The tail was made longer, and the body had a much larger and stockier build to it. Everything was pretty much spot on with this suit, but it had one big letdown. And that's the eyes. They are just too big, and due to having an issue with the suit's movable eye mechanic, they would sometimes be positioned to give Godzilla a dumbfounded, derpy look. And it can really be distracting in some scenes. So as a result, despite this suit having a lot going for it, it's gonna fall into the B tier. Ah yeah, now we're talking, the Biogoji, easily one of the best suits in the entire roster, and would set the staple design for the rest of the Heisei films. And it's the design which is probably the most iconic Godzilla design that's still used to this very day. It's the one that's used in video games, it's the one that's featured on my shirt, and it's even the one that's represented in this Godzilla plush. And Godzilla must have really been hitting the gym hard with this one, as the chest had some pectoral muscles put in, and the legs were made way stockier. Yeah, Godzilla doesn't skip leg day, 
Neither should you. The eyes had been reduced in size and now had very little white showing, giving Godzilla a much more animalistic look than he had ever had before. The head became slightly smaller, but the mouth became longer, and Godzilla now had rows of shark-like teeth. Yeah, this suit is just awesome, and is the first to hit the honorary G-spot. The Guido Goji A lot of people tend to think that the Bio Goji and the Guido Goji are the same suit, but there are some subtle differences. Godzilla now has a bit more of a snarl to his facial expression, and the chest is made to look a bit more muscular, showing that Godzilla is still hitting the gym. But this is going to be a tricky one for me to rate, as there was another Godzilla suit design that was used in the film, which doesn't appear to be featured on this tier list. And though this other design has the same body, it's now fitted with a different head, which drops the snarl look and gives it a flatter, more dinosaur-like appearance. This alternate design was used for when Godzilla first made his appearance on land, and for the final battle against Mecha King Ghidorah. And I just think it looks better than the snarling suit. So if we're including this suit in the tier list, I would put Snarling Guido Goji into G tier, just above Bio Goji, and the Flat Guido Goji, just above the Snarling Guido Goji. Onto the next film, we have the Bato Goji. Though keeping much of the same design, some changes were also made. This suit was slightly slimmed down, and the legs are looking a little less bulky. Guess he stopped gymming. But the neck, weirdly enough, actually looked a bit chunkier. The darkened animal-like eyes now had a yellowish tinge to them, which I think is a step down, as I really like the animal look. And because of this, I also think it has slightly less of a menacing look than the previous ones. It did have a cool feature though, which allowed the head to tilt up and down independent from the body. But overall, this is a downgrade from the previous two suits, so it falls into A tier. Rado Goji This suit did return Godzilla's bulk onto the upper body, but really they decided to slim down his legs, which gives him a top heavy, chunky kind of look from certain angles. The tail was also placed slightly further up, which I think was done to give it more maneuverability, noticeably when Godzilla is hacking Mechagodzilla with it. But again, it kind of gives Godzilla a bit of a weird stance. So for that, this is actually going into B tier. The Mogi Goji. Overall an improvement from the previous suit, the legs have some weight back on them, and the upper body comes across as more broad and muscular, giving him a much more proportioned look than before. The eyes have been slightly enlarged, which does lose a little bit of the menacing factor, but at this point Godzilla was actually starting to fall into the more anti-hero stance again. In general, a step back up, so it's going back into A tier. Then we have the Desu Goji, which is actually the previous suit, but undergoing some major alterations. In this film, Godzilla is slowly burning from the inside out as his heart is beginning to melt down. So in order to showcase this, the suit had around 200 lights installed to give him that orange burning glow. Coupled with a ventilation system which allowed steam to seep out of certain parts, this steam was actually carbon monoxide which caused the poor suit actor to pass out several times during filming. But man, what an effect. Which even to this day, I think just looks absolutely fantastic. The eyes were also given a red tinge which glowed, and the charcoal grey skin was spray painted black. All of which really makes you really feel the burning sensation that Godzilla must be going through. And for that, this is most definitely a suit that has to hit the G-spot. Alright, the Toro Goji. If we're going to be doing Godzilla designs, we have to also include Godzilla 1998. As far as creature design goes, it's not actually that bad, and does actually follow the basic principles of what Godzilla was based on. A T-Rex with long arms and stegosaurus-like plates going down its back. But as far as a Godzilla design goes, it's pretty awful. The feet are too dinosaur-like, as Godzilla has a more stocky elephant foot kind of look. The body is positioned horizontal, whereas Godzilla always had an upright stance. The dorsal fins are like solid spikes rather than jagged plates. And the head is just basically a T-Rex. This thing is more Indominus Rex than it is Godzilla. Not to mention that he is just way too skinny. Godzilla was meant to represent this unstoppable force that's near indestructible, whereas this scaly little bitch got taken down by the military. The military? I actually prefer the look some of the toys gave this Godzilla design afterwards, which would offer a much more upright posture and gave some chest muscle to give him a bit more power. Oh and hey, they even gave him the trademark blue atomic breath. Which, yeah, this Godzilla doesn't even have that in the film, 
It's just some sort of weird burp-like fire thing, which apparently Godzilla wasn't even originally going to have, and they reluctantly pull it in at a later stage. So, yeah, it was obvious that these filmmakers didn't actually want to make a Godzilla film, and the design very much shows that. This is going into Manila's bitch tier. And following on from that, we have Godzilla the Animated Series. So after the 1998 film, a Godzilla animated series was released. And Loki, despite the film being painfully mid, the animated series from what I remember was actually pretty decent. And I do need to go back and do a full review on it at some point. The Godzilla design itself, despite being based off the 1998 design, actually looks alright here. I like the brownish colour scheme with the blue dorsal plates. Godzilla has a more upright posture and is looking a bit more muscular. And now he actually has his atomic breath, which though coloured green, I actually think is quite fitting for something that's meant to be a radioactive creature. So yeah, Godzilla the Animated Series actually manages to get itself into C tier. The Miyagoji. So originally, after killing off Godzilla in Godzilla vs Destroyer, Japan wasn't intending on doing another Godzilla film until his 50th anniversary in 2004. But that got changed after the disappointing Tristar film, and so they quickly rushed out their own Godzilla film to bring the monster back to form. And so we kick off as to what's referred to as the Millennial series. Like with the Tristar film, Japan also decided to make some pretty major changes to the Godzilla look, which hadn't really been done before. And so here we get the Godzilla 2000 design. Godzilla's skin had gone from a rough tree bark like texture to a much more jagged look. The dorsal plates were also made much larger and much more spiky. The head was more reptilian like, kind of similar to the King Goji suit, only now having large jagged teeth and possessing a menacing brow which gave it a much better frontal appearance compared to the King Goji. The ears had also returned and the eyes had a yellowish tinge to them, but most notably, the charcoal grey colour had now gone and was replaced with a dark green, and the dorsal plates had a slight pink tinge to them. The atomic breath had gone from its iconic blue to a burning red. And though I do prefer the original blue, I gotta admit, the glowing red does look pretty cool, especially in the night scenes. And although this Godzilla was drastically different from any design we'd seen before, it still felt very much like Godzilla. And despite the major changes, I actually really like this design. Godzilla's proportions look great, looking both stocky but not too chunky, possessing long powerful arms with a longer and less rounded tail. And if you wanted to see what this suit would have looked like in a more traditional Godzilla colour scheme, it was reused for some live action fight scenes in the Godzilla game, CR Godzilla 3ST Battle. I would actually put this into G tier, but I'm going to put it into A tier. And that's purely because I think the next entry is just that little bit better. And that's the Giragoji. Now although this looks pretty identical to the previous suit, there are a few differences. This design now has a lighter shade of green, and the plates were given even more of a pinkish tinge, which I actually think makes a nice colour contrast. The mouth also seemed to have some of the fat trimmed away, giving it a more streamlined look. And so yeah, those minor changes, as minor as they were, were enough to bring it up from A tier into the G tier. GMK Goji, another fan favourite. The GMK Goji would see Godzilla return to his much more classic look, the charcoal grey colour was back, and the skin had returned to its classic texture. The dorsal plates were smoothened back down, and the pink tinge was gone. The head was much more dinosaur-like, and sported a strong set of teeth. The most notable thing about this suit was the ghostly white eyes, showing no pupils at all. This was done because in the film Godzilla is meant to be fueled by the angered spirits of the Japanese soldiers who died in World War II, giving Godzilla's face a ghostly, yet also truly angered appearance. The head also had some animatronics built inside, which would give the suit ability to pull off some menacing snarls. This was also the tallest Godzilla suit ever used in a film, coming in at just over 2 meters tall. Now if I recall correctly, this suit was initially going to have a much more horizontal stance to it, similar to that of the 1998 Godzilla, but due to the incredible strain this would have put on the suit actor, the more upright stance was used instead. And as a result, the upward stance kind of gives this suit a bit of a beer belly look to it, and the legs do look a little big in proportion to the rest of the body. So even though I imagine a lot of people were expecting this to go into G tier, I'm actually going to put this down into A tier. 
Kirugoji. So this is a weird one for me, because it's basically the 2000 style Godzilla, but with the more traditional colour scheme. And so in theory, this should be a solid G tier suit, right? No. Let's go over the good stuff. I like the skin texture, not quite as jagged as the millennial suits, but still looking good. The sharp jagged dorsal plates are back, but not quite as large. And rather than having the purple tinge, they now have a whitish colour to them, which actually looks pretty nice. The body proportions are good, the arms look muscular, and the head has some of the classic features such as the fangs and ears. So what don't I like about it? It's mainly the head. They've shortened Godzilla's mouth and given him these large yellow eyes, which actually could be altered via animatronics to change up Godzilla's facial expressions, which though I think looks pretty good from the front, from the side, not so much. And in some shots, it just makes Godzilla look more like a startled cat than a menacing monster. And the other main reason is its mobility. I don't know whether this is an issue with the suit itself or the directing choice, but it comes across as so stiff and rigid during the film. Like, look at this first battle where Godzilla is facing off against Mechagodzilla. He's barely even flinching. He's just standing there, menacingly! Now from what I recall, behind the scenes they were actually considering to use the GMK suit from the previous film, but because that suit was so tall, they would also need to make another Mechagodzilla suit, which the time and budget just wasn't there for. They also reused this suit for the sequel film, Tokyo SOS, in which it's practically the exact same suit, only now Godzilla has a large scar on his chest from his fight in the previous film. So yeah, even though this suit should theoretically be at least an A tier, I'm actually going to have to pull it into B tier. <coughs> Final Goji. Named after the film that it was in, Final Wars, but I guess also fittingly enough, because as of this video, this was the actual final Godzilla suit to be used in a Godzilla film. And from here on in, Godzilla would now always be featured using CG. Which, as a Godzilla fan, that kind of saddens me. Again, as with most of the millennial films, Godzilla once again had quite a drastic change from his previous film. Looking much more like his Showa series designs than he has done in a long time. Which was probably intentional as with all the classic monsters and the crazy fight scenes going on, they really did want this to feel like a modern day Showa film. Godzilla was now much more slimmed down. This included the arms and legs, which though great for mobility and all the fight scenes, does make him look a little scrawny in some angles. The dorsal plates had also gotten smaller, with the adjacent rows now being much smaller than the middle row. Again, similar to how he was in the Showa designs. This was more done for mobility purposes during the fight scenes, just so the plates didn't get in the way too much. The head was also reduced in size, and apparently adopted traits from several Godzilla suits in the past, such as the Heisei Godzilla, the Mosu Goji, and the Shoda Goji. There's stuff to like here, as Godzilla had his classic fangs and ears, and the eyes are darkened to give him that more animal-like look again, but though I think this suit looks good from front-facing angles, I can't say the same from side angles. It just looks too thin. I think the majority of the suit's design boils down to function over fashion. Great for mobility, not so great for appearance. So for me, I think I'm actually going to have to put this one into C tier. Uh, Godzilla Earth. Admittedly, I've only watched the first of this film's trilogies, and yeah, wasn't really a big fan, and the Godzilla's design didn't really do much for me either. It's just very bulky, doesn't have much movement to it, the skin texture looks off, and the face just doesn't look that threatening at all. In fact, covering that face with the skin texture just kind of makes him look like an old man. D tier. Shin Godzilla. Not only a pretty radical design change for Godzilla, but also a pretty crazy origin story too. Which leads to Godzilla taking on multiple forms in this film. So I'm just going to look at his final form, as this is the most... Godzillary. Yeah, it's a word. Lots of stuff to like here. Godzilla has a far more horrifying look than he's ever had in the past. This design makes the GMK Goji look like Barney the Dinosaur. The mouth is full of these needle-like jagged teeth. The eyes, though really small, have this piercing look to them which stares right into your soul. The skin texture, with the glowing red underneath, gives him an almost volcanic rock-like appearance. And the atomic breath has to be one of the coolest in the entire series, 
as Godzilla's entire body will glow and his mouth expands on unhinges like some sort of demented snake. Though there are aspects of the design that I'm not so much a fan of, and I feel mainly that falls into the proportions. The lower body is far too big, and the arms are far too scrawny, and the tail is a little bit too large as well. I suppose you could argue that Godzilla hadn't done quite morphine yet, but this is the design that we ended up getting for the film. But either way, really strong Godzilla design, and so I'm putting it into A tier. Uh, Godzilla's singular point. Never actually watched this series, so completely neutral to it in that sense. From what I've read, similar to Shin Godzilla, this Godzilla has multiple forms, and it's the final form which looks the most Godzilla-like. So I guess we'll look at that. Overall, it looks pretty good. I like the white dorsal plates with the red veins running through them. The body has a nice texture to it. I like the spikes running down the chest and the side of the arms. But man, that lower body. I don't think Godzilla has ever looked quite so thick. He puts the Heisei Godzilla's squatting to shame. It's so thick! The head has a pretty cool design with the large fangs and multiple rows of teeth, but not so much when it's facing from the front. Overall, I'm gonna say D tier. Gemstone Godzilla. This is actually a fan-made Godzilla design, which appeared in the short films Godzilla vs. Gigan Rex and Godzilla vs. Megalon. The dorsal plates look nice, the head looks cool, I like the small eyes with the scowl, giving a nice sort of fearsome, don't fuck with me kind of look, and I like the longer jaw too. I would say his arms look a little bit too small in comparison with his chunky body, and I'm not really a fan of the overall lumpy skin texture, but I'll say it's a solid C tier. Godzilla 2014, alright, America's second try at the big G. Definitely an improvement over the 1998 design, because at least you can actually look at it and be like, oh yeah, that's Godzilla. I know when this came out, a lot of people were criticizing this for how fat Godzilla looked, and were like, oh yeah, American Godzilla, of course it would be fat, ha 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 ha. But honestly, I wasn't really that fussed at the time. I was just happy that he even looked somewhat like Godzilla. But looking back at it now, yeah, he was a little bit too chunky. I'm not really a fan of the dorsal plates either, still looking more like crystal tips than the classic jagged plate look. I think the legs and feet look a little bit too stumpy. I know I said in the 1998 look that Godzilla's feet should have a bit more of an elephant look to them. Well here they've kind of made it too elephant. Overall though, it was still an okay design, and so I'm putting it into C tier. Godzilla King of the Monsters? Pretty similar to the 2014 design, but Godzilla had now been slimmed down a little, and the dorsal plates had a more classic look to them. So I'm actually bumping this one up to B tier. Godzilla vs Kong. From what I can tell, it looks pretty identical to the King of the Monsters design. So yeah, still gonna stick this into B tier. Godzilla against Kong. Again, pretty similar design, but I felt as though Godzilla had been slimmed down a bit for this film. Maybe because this film had some pretty crazy fight scenes going on, they're slimming him down to make the fight choreography easier similar to what they did in Final Wars, but I do quite like it. We obviously have the rosy pink dorsal plates and uh, pink glow to him. I'm not actually too huge on this. I do prefer the traditional blue. I know I said I quite like the rose color on the Millennium Godzilla designs, but they weren't quite so vibrant, and I think they worked better off of the green Godzilla color. But overall, still like this design, so I'm putting it into B tier. Godzilla minus one. First up, I have seen this film. Reason I haven't done a review on it yet is because I'm waiting for the digital release to come out so I can actually do a proper in-depth look at it. But man, this is an awesome Godzilla design. The skin texture has a much more rougher and scabbier look than usual, which like the original 1954 design, was meant to represent the skin of actual victims who had radiation burns. Interestingly, the colour almost seems to have a slight brown tinge to it. I wonder if that's also meant to be a callback to the original Godzilla suit being coloured brown. I really like the dorsal plates on this. Very sharp and very jagged looking. Almost like thorns coming out of his back. The mouth is quite short, the eyes relatively small, and the face has a deep brow to it. Actually kind of reminds me of the snarling Guido Goji. And this Godzilla has one of the coolest atomic breath power-ups I've seen in the series. I love the way the dorsal plates slowly protrude out of his back one by one. 
Negatives to this design that I do think the arms are just a little bit too scrawny. And sometimes the CG does make the movement feel a little bit too janky. But overall, a really solid Godzilla design. And probably one of the closest resemblance we've had to the 1954 Goji suit today. So, just like the original suit, it's going to fall into a very solid A tier. And then lastly, that leaves this little guy. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I have no idea where this is from. G tier.